live from New York. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering Rapid Miner Wisdom 2016. Brought to you by Rapid Miner. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. We're here at the Rapid Miner Wisdom Conference. This is theCUBE, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. Elian Karsenat is here, he's the founder of NAM Store. Elian, welcome to theCUBE, welcome to America. Well, thank you, Dave. Hi, Jeff. Welcome. Pleasure so, to be here. Pleasure seeing you. So yeah. tell us, NAM Store, NAM Store, sorry. Um, what's the company do, what are you guys all about? Linguistics, all kinds of interesting things you're doing, tell us. Yeah, simple answer, NAM Store sorts names. We look at personal names and uh, we try to infer any information like, for example, gender or likely origin. Uh, uh, in a city like New York that's so diverse, um, you can use this information, for example, to, to revise uh, the patterns of segregation in the city, uh, to, to analyze what's the gender gap, for example, in data science, how many men and women are here today at Rapid Minor. Uh, all this information you can typically infer from the names. So you take a corpus of data into your system and then it presents you with all kinds of information outputs about that data, is that right? Or? Exactly, Dave, and uh, in a very uh, simply, simple form, you can uh, import data that has a name but doesn't have, for example, any information about gender or origin and you can add those variables. So the way we've integrated, for example, in Rapid Miner, was to, to add an extension that adds operators like passing names, extracting gender and origin, and that will take a data set as input and add columns uh, with those new variables, which then you can correlate to, to um, other elements or input in a decision tree or um, or then, of course, project with other variables like geography, like uh, job type, you know, lots of different things. So uh, let's get to it. How are people using you know, your, your product? And take us through an example or two. Well, the simplest example is uh, we've partnered um, with a lady, uh, Elena Rossini, to launch a, a website called Gender Gap Grader, where we analyze the gender gap in wide industries, like for example the film industry, or uh, airline pilots, or VC and business angels, and we produce research on what's the gender gap compared now, for example, compared to 10 years ago. Um, and this is a very practical example of how uh, data mining can also uh, help um, resolve some of the social issues. But also, uh, if you take the example of marketing or sentiment analysis. Uh, the same technology can be used, for example, to analyze what is the sentiment on Twitter or, or LinkedIn, social networks that have a lot of information, a lot of content, but do not contain any information about gender. So you have to infer it some way, for example, from the name. And uh, many large US um, companies in the digital sector uh, don't actually have gender information uh, on their client because to optimize the acquisition of uh, new customers and new leads, they minimize the amount of information that their user have to input when right. they register. Right. So usually they would just register with a first name and a last name, uh, perhaps an email address, and, and initially that's what they have. Um, as for the topic of origin, uh, or you know, additional sociodemographics about uh, about the origin of names, we've done a few projects with, for example, in the field of economic development, helping countries reconnect with their diaspora, for example, to attract foreign direct investments to their country. Actually, the best example uh, of countries doing that is Ireland. They've attracted billions of dollars uh, through their diaspora, um, using connection, family links, um, uh, already in the 80s to attract uh, big companies to Ireland. And 
even today. Um, of course, there is also tax uh, incentives for U.S. companies in the digital sector to, um, to establish their headquarters in Ireland. But also, ID Island is very proactive at uh, connected with, uh, connecting with um, people of Irish heritage who, who have a strong position in a U.S. company. Uh, so some other countries have started to do that. Uh, we've actually worked, for example, with uh, Invest Lithuania uh, in the field of foreign direct investments, and also with my country, my own country, France. Um, and not only it's important uh, for countries to reconnect with their diaspora for investment, but more and more also for talents, innovation, uh, education. Uh, of course, for countries that are in developing mode, uh, this is even more in important. If we think of countries like uh, some African countries, uh, uh, they have sometimes even health problems because they don't have enough doctors. They went away. So um, the more the world is open, the, wor the more people move around in uh, the planet, the more at the same time it creates opportunities to reconnect these communities, you know, advanced scientists, innovators with their home countries so they can give back in a way through talents, through investment and so on. Okay, so this so is another example. So, so take us through. So how does, how does the product work? A and take us through how it goes from sort of name sorting into what you just described as attracting people to you know, Ireland or, you know, that's a, that's a it feels like a big <laughs> leap, maybe. Yeah, there is, there is a leap, but uh, what happens is usually those countries, for example, lost track of their uh, diaspora. So big organizations like uh, the IOM, you know, the International Organization of Migration, or even organizations like USAID or the French, uh, uh, AFD and so on, would typically launch diaspora mapping exercise to, to try to find who are those people, where are they, um, and how they can help their home country, for example, overcome a big crisis. Um, so what we can do, for example, is uh, connect, let's say through RapidMiner, for example, to a very large database of senior executives uh, in uh, Western Europe or the US, for example, and, and filter names that are very likely originally from those countries. And so we just accelerate this diaspora mapping exercise. Mm. Uh, and of course then the investment promotion agency can um, reconnect with those people no? in a very uh, uh, proactive way, uh, for example, inviting them to an event to promote um, investment in the home country. Another example, th and this is how um, home countries can benefit from their diaspora through investment or skills, but more recently we've, uh, we've participated to a conference in Canada. It was called the Canada Science Policy Conference. And Canada is really interested, conversely, to, to attract more talents to Canada in science but also uh, to create uh, more international um, collaboration with universities in emerging countries. So in that case, it's really a win-win because um, people originally from those countries, of course, they can contribute. They don't really necessarily have to go back to their home country to contribute. They can, uh, they can have um, a position in the university, they can participate to conferences, they can remotely tutor uh, students, um, so there's a wide range of collaboration that can, uh, that can happen. Talk about the product, so you have the, a platform, obviously, it's got you know, APIs, yes. I'm sure. <laughs> exactly, the, the product really is an API uh, that takes as an input a name and gives as an output gender or origin. And all that is integrated nicely within RapidMiner so that you have these operators that can be part of a, of a, uh, a more integrated business process, like from data acquisition, data enrichment, maybe also predictive analytics and so on. Um, we've had a few uh, projects in the, in the US, actually one of our uh, 
um, clients is here. Uh, we presented today also one pilot project we did with Boston City to analyze the geodemographics of the city and to prepare a very interesting map of, uh, of the different uh, uh, regions of the city. And, uh, and for today's presentation, we've done that also uh, for New York. So we've looked at uh, uh, a database called ACRIS, or A-C-R-I-S, which is a, a real estate database who owns uh, New York in the different districts. And, we, and we've looked at that uh, from um, the data mining per perspective. Um, the, um, we are, of course, extremely excited to, to work with an uh, organization that already use RapidMiner for typically customer segmentation, predictive analytics, and especially in sectors like uh, banking, uh, typically remittances where uh, money flows uh, cross-border uh, between uh, the uh, very mature countries and the emerging countries, uh, also the travel industry, and, and also uh, geodemographics, which is how to understand territories and, uh, and um, segregation patterns. So, I was say, I'm curious, so did you have a solution that then you had to go find problems, which you found a lot that you can apply it to? Or did you come at it really from the problem set that they needed a better way to get this demographic information and then kind of mm. build the ontology to figure that out? Because it sounds like the variety of applications is huge for what is a relatively specialized application. Yes, exactly. So, so we, um, it's a bit of both. So, uh, so we, uh, we, did, we started to build this product in uh, three, three years ago. Uh, we didn't have a clear business plan or understanding, let's say, of what could be the, the problem this technology would solve. But we, we were sure we would uh, bring a new angle of analysis that would be interesting. Uh, and then it's a bit by chance that we started to understand how that could be useful. Uh, so, for example, for the gender gap, it's really uh, meeting uh, Elena at an OECD conference that triggered this, um, this uh, application uh, of measuring the gender gap and promoting gender equality in organizations. Um, and we, uh, we did an initial project, which at the time was to, uh, to look at the gender gap in the film industry. And that was during the Cannes Festival, so, so the little infographics we did went kind of viral. Uh, right, right. And, and that triggered uh, interest. As for uh, the topic of origin, this is a topic that is very sensitive in France, so, uh, so we were always extremely careful about uh, what type of projects we could do. And initially, we decided to work with uh, governments uh, and universities, and gradually, they came with ideas of how that could be useful. Okay. Um, uh, as for, for example, the city of Boston, uh, they found us through uh, uh, some of the, the blog posts we had made uh, mm -hmm. about Irish diaspora and so on. Uh, uh, and we're very excited about uh, doing more interesting projects with them. Um, because, of course, uh, those who really know what, uh, what the use cases are, are in the end, uh, the cities, the, right, the companies, right. the uh, organizations that that have a problem to solve. Well, and I imagine if you had the time element too, where the data is probably even easier to analyze, take Boston, not only the, not only the moment today, mm -hmm. but roll it back you know, every 10 years for the last 200. Um, a whole nother way to see changes, migrations. But I'm curious to know, how far do you think you can go? How many columns of data do you think you can extract value for beyond uh, gender and uh, origin? Well, uh, we've started uh, really focusing on personal names. And um, of course there is a limit to how much uh, information we can extract from that. But the first thing is that varies a lot by country. And just to give an example, um, you know, India is a country where you have maybe six or seven scripts 
to write the names because it's different states, different languages, and uh, and out of 1.5 billion people, uh, you can already allocate the names to about 30 regions and different social groups. So, so it, there is a wealth of information there that that is totally different to what you could extract from, you know, for example, names in Mexico. Uh, same thing with uh, uh, regions like Africa, uh, where countries are absolutely arbitrary in terms of geography. So the human population, uh, the culture, the language, uh, is uh, something that goes beyond the borders. And, and there is a lot of work that we, uh, we can still do with anthropologists and so on to, to understand all that. Um, and we do plan uh, also to, to expand what we've started to, what we've done on personal names to other types of proper names like company names, you know, branding and, uh, mm. and so on. Um, hey, Leon, we're out of time, but um, last question, the company. Um, Self-funded, you venture-backed, you bootstrapped. Give us the update of where you where you headed. So we're self-funded. Uh, 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 we're profitable, and we um, we work a lot through a network, uh, network in terms of sale, and network in terms of uh, collaboration in the academia sector mm. to improve the software for different regions. So we're a small private company. And, uh, and we are quite excited to, to have uh, this opportunity to be part of a larger platform like RapidMiner to expand uh, you know, worldwide in, uh, in, uh, in a wide range of markets. Yeah, well it's a global community with some really smart data scientists and that's great. Well congratulations on your progress and thanks for great coming story. in and sharing uh, your story with theCUBE. Thank you Dave, thank you Jeff. Great to meet you. Welcome. All right, keep right there everybody. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. RapidMiner Wisdom 16. New York City, right back.